my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a home DIY project. I am making this ginormous cat tree slash castle for Luna. It is her second year adoption date birthday and it is something that I've wanted to do for a long time so I am super excited to show you guys how I made this. Now keep in mind that this is a larger scale project. All the measurements will be in this video if you would like to recreate this. I thought of pretty much everything I could think of, including this light in the bathroom. She had a little bit of an accident. She kind of missed the box because she couldn't see. So that's why I added the light in there for her. Now, if you guys would like to see me make this thing, then without further ado, let's get started. So I just wanted to show you guys the current setup that she has. This is her cat tree that she had when she was a little tiny kitten. She doesn't go in there anymore. She still scratches on the scratching post, but that's about it. And this is the current litter box setup. It's just pretty much out there. So there's litter all over the floor around it. The other problem is that the dog gets into it. As you can see right here, Lena loves to go into the litter box. So we wanted something that is more concealed, something that Lena is not going to really go in. And so far the current litter box setup is working great. No litter has gone out of the actual encasing and Lena does not go in there. So, so far it has fixed all the issues. And this is the current space that I'll be working with to place the cat tree. So all my measurements are based off of this corner right here. To get started with materials, I wanted glass legs. So I got these jars from the Dollar Tree. I have 14 of the larger ones. And then I also have six of the smaller ones here. We're going to stack them for two different heights. And then I got three packs of sisal rope from Walmart. For the adhesive for the project to glue the jars together, I used Gorilla Epoxy Glue. I tested this out already. I actually stuck two of the jars together and I sat on it. I just wanted to make sure that it can hold weight, so I sat myself on it just to make sure. To build the rest of the structure, I got five of these half inch thick, two feet by four feet fiber boards from Home Depot. Also seven of these plates from the Dollar Tree. And I also got one of these hinges for the lid to access the litter box. To attach all of the pieces together, I got a box of these wood screws. They're the Flathead Phillips wood screws. To paint everything, I am still approaching to finish this can of white paint that I have left over. And then because the ropes were a little bit too yellowish, I got one of these Martha Stewart paints. These are non-toxic. Make sure you get one that says it's non-toxic so it's pet safe. As far as tools, I have my handy dandy power drill here for drilling the holes as well as putting in the screws. To paint, I'll be using paint rollers as well as a basic paintbrush. I also got this rafter square for lining up the box when I'm drilling the hole and putting everything together. Measuring tape, pencils, painter's tape, and also a ruler. To cut the wood, you can actually get them to custom cut it for you at Lowe's or Home Depot or at your local supply store if they offer wood cutting. For me, I had a lot of pieces. I wasn't sure what size I wanted everything. And I do a lot of home projects, so I actually decided to get the Blade Runner X2 machine to cut it myself. By all means, if you don't feel safe doing it, please, please, please get somebody else to do it for you. It is a power tool and you need to be careful. You need to make sure you're using gloves. You need to make sure you're using a face mask and, of course, goggles always. To get started on the legs, I'm going to need my epoxy glue. I have this clear plate here and what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and glue the two pieces together on top of each other like so. To create the two heights, we have the longer ones here which is the two longer jars stuck together and then we have the shorter ones here which is a shorter jar with a longer jar together. 
So here is a diagram just to show you how many we're going to need. So you can see here we're going to need four longer legs and then the rest is going to be the shorter ones. To make the epoxy, we're just going to go ahead and put two equal portions and then we're going to mix it for 20 seconds. And then I'm just going to go ahead and place the glue on the bottom side of one of the jars. Make sure to be very generous with the epoxy. This is what's going to be holding the two pieces together. I'm going to have a rope over this as extra support, but I definitely want it to make sure that it's not going to fall apart. So I put a lot of it on there. Next, we just place the jar on top of the other jar with the base facing the top of the other jar like so. And then to keep it steady, I'm actually using the painter's tape here to keep it steady and straight and make sure you're just going to leave it for about 30 minutes for it to set so you can touch it but I wouldn't put any weight on it until the next day. Here is a full cover of all the legs so you can see here we have six of the shorter legs and then we have four of the larger ones in the back. Like I said I tried to sit on them so that's why the other ones are already done. And here is the patterns for cutting the five boards that you have here. Make sure to save all of the spare boards so that way you have them for doing the trims and also for the decorating on the base as well. So make sure you keep those pieces as spare. I do recommend before cutting to actually measure out all of the boards on where you want to position everything so that way you know exactly what you're cutting. Since you're having all these separate pieces with each board, it's just better to be safe than sorry. You have to pay for each one of these boards so the last thing I would want is for me to go ahead and cut right through something that I wasn't supposed to and then I have to buy a different board again. So make sure you're going to draw all your patterns before cutting the board. I understand that obviously at Home Depot you're not able to do that. If they allow you, I would just set aside and just draw the lines on there before you have them cut it for you. Now to cut the door for the gazebo part on the top as well as the base on the bottom for the litter box, what I did was I actually just took a regular letter size paper, fold it in half, and then I drew a curve and cut that curve out. Of course, you can keep adjusting it to make it look more rounder or less rounder. You can put a pattern in it if you want. Um, so I just did that and then to put it on the boards, all I did was I just marked the middle of the board and then I matched the middle fold of the door to the board to place it directly in the middle. I then just outline it with a pencil to get it ready for cutting. To attach the boards together, I'm going to need a regular drill bit and then also a regular screwdriver. Then we're going to first place the two pieces together and pre-drill a hole. And then we're going to take our wood screw and just screw it in to connect the two pieces. To get started with the litter box piece of the cat tree, I'm going to start with the inner wall. The inner wall for this is actually shorter than the outer walls, so that's why we want to attach this on there first. To make sure that I have everything sized correctly and I don't end up attaching two boards too close together and then not being able to fit the litter box in, I'm going to use the lid of the litter box to kind of measure everything out and use the spare pieces to kind of place it on the side and measure out where I want that middle piece to be. Once I have that, I can go ahead and outline where I want the board to be and then also put the three marks where I'm going to put the screws through. Then I'm going to go ahead and put the mark on top of the wall piece so I can drill a hole in there first. This is just to pre-drill it so that way I don't miss the mark when I'm drilling through the board. And then I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill the hole so that way I can line everything up easier. And then drill the hole through the board before attaching it with the screws. And you can see here, this is where I actually use the rafter square to kind of even everything out to attach the two boards together. Make sure you have that base piece because there is that half an inch gap in front of the wall where the door would hit. 
And then using the same techniques of drilling and then putting the screw through, I'm going to go ahead and attach the rest of the boards, which is going to be the backboard, the side boards, and then also the top board as well. So to do the ledges, I'm going to do a framing around it so that way it's going to be half an inch high to hide the carpet edges. So what I did was actually use the spare pieces to create one inch thick pieces and I did a horizontal cut on them. So when you place it onto the board, we're going to attach it with the screw from the side and it's going to sit like this and then we can put the edges on there and it'll fit like a frame. First, I'm going to go ahead and screw the hole just like attaching the other boards and then I'm going to go ahead and put the screw in. After I have all the pieces put together, I'm going to go ahead and start painting everything. It's going to need about two coats or three coats in certain areas depending if it is just an edge or if it is a big surface. So I'm going to go ahead and just paint all of the pieces. Now keep in mind, I'm just using this paint because I have it laying around in the house and I figured I can use it and save some money, but you can definitely use spray paint to make it a quicker process. Once I was finished with the litter box base, I went ahead and I got these little felt stickers to put on the base just so it doesn't scratch my flooring when I'm scooting it around. And I went ahead and I put a total of eight of them on there. You can definitely put more if you need. I just figured I just needed to spread out the weight evenly. Next, I'm gonna drill the hinge onto the side of the litter box. Make sure when you're putting the door down, you're going to push it right across the edge of the hinge so that way when you close it, it's not going to hit the bottom layer. Also feel free to pre-drill to help with the screws going into the door. Now I can just put the litter box in there and it's ready to go. I actually also decided to add the edge onto the base of the top part of the tree. So I cut these pieces down and I'm going to go ahead and do the Gorilla Glue to glue it down. That way you don't see any of the screws sticking out. And keep in mind you can definitely do this before you paint the base. I just kind of forgot so that's why I had to put this on after I put the hinge. I didn't want to take it out of the hinge too many times and then next thing you know it becomes loose. So that's why I just kind of put it on there and then I painted it afterwards instead. To attach the sessile ropes onto the legs and also hide that they are cups, what I did was I actually used the painter's tape to mark off where I want the sessile rope to be. We're not going to remove this tape just because it does provide a coarse surface for the cup so that way when we're hot gluing the rope on there, it'll actually stay on there very well. So I'm going to actually completely cover that surface area with the tape. And for the shorter legs, I actually made them a little bit smaller just to add some variety to it. After that, I'm going to go ahead and use my hot glue gun to attach the sisal rope on there. You're really only going to need to apply the hot glue gun on the bottom two layers and then also the finishing two layers as well. Just make sure you're pushing the rope against the rope on the bottom as you're rolling it up. To make the squares for the mosaic pieces, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the middle piece first and then I'm going to cut them out in squares. You can definitely measure this out with a ruler and then cut them each one out. However, I do have the Cricut machine so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that and have the machine cut out all the squares for me. Now to put the mosaic pieces onto all of the ledges and everything, I actually laid them out just to make sure that everything is spaced out correctly before gluing it on there. The glue that I used is the Gorilla Glue and then once I ran out of that glue I used the E6000 glue. They both held up pretty well. Um, the only difference is just that the Gorilla Glue was able to hold onto it a little bit quicker than the E6000 where the E6000 I had to keep checking back just to make sure that it doesn't start going crooked or falling off. 
Next, I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the pieces I'm gonna need for the carpet. I'm gonna make a template for it and I'm actually gonna keep the template just in case I need to switch out the carpet later on in the future if it gets dirty or if it gets old or if I just want to change up the color. The carpet I got from Home Depot, they cut the carpet right then and there and all I got was just one square yard and it was able to cover the entire project. Once I was done with that, I actually went ahead and grabbed a roll of crafting paper and I cut out each piece and I'm gonna go ahead and keep this for future use. So if I need to cut any other carpet pieces, I can just simply grab these again and follow the template and I'll be able to get the right pieces to fit onto the cat tree. Next, I placed each piece where I wanted it to go and then I just outlined where the legs would go on the base of each platform so I know where to adhere the legs to. And to do that, I used the same method. I used the Gorilla Epoxy Glue and I went ahead and I glued it onto the base. Again, make sure you're being very generous with this because you wanna make sure it's not gonna come off. So you can see that I glued all of the bases upside down and I have everything laying here just to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit overnight to make sure that it's holding up very well before I put the rest of it together. Now for the carpet pieces, we have to keep in mind that we have those legs there that we need the carpet to go around. So now that everything is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and place that on top of the actual pattern and I'm gonna draw a red circle around on top of each pattern. The reason why I'm using a different color is because when we're cutting the carpet, we're actually gonna cut the carpet upside down. So we're gonna have to make sure that when we're cutting it, we're gonna actually place the pattern upside down as well. So that way when we have the carpet, it's gonna be the right side up with all the holes where it needs to be. Next, you have all of those red holes. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out with an X-Acto knife. Um, you can still tell where the red is after you cut it. And when you do cut this, you don't really need a cutting board under it just because you're gonna cover that area with the glue anyway. So I couldn't really see it, so I didn't really mind just cutting directly on top of it. But if you want to put a cutting board under it, you can. However, it's just not really necessary in my case, so that's why I didn't do it. Now that I know where those circles are, I can put epoxy to glue the next layer. And then I just went ahead and just repeated the same steps for each level and glued each level on top. Now to cut out the actual carpet, I have this square cut out based off the size of this piece of pattern already. I'm just gonna use this wood to kind of hold it down so I can draw the circles in there. The circle is to go around the pole so what I did was I placed this upside down so that way the right side up is facing down just like how the carpet is upside down and I went and took a sharpie and I just marked each of the circles. Make sure when you're marking this circle you're really going across that line so that way you don't make the circle too small. If it is too small it won't be able to go around the actual pillars in the cat tree and then it's gonna kind of waste that piece of carpet because then you're gonna have to cut it again and then the hole is gonna be too big. Now when you're cutting, you're gonna actually cut that circle out and you can see I cut a straight line down towards the edge of the carpet. The straight line is so that we can actually go around each of the pillars as we're placing the carpets in there. Um, since there is the edge on there, you don't have to worry about gluing it down or anything. It should just hold it right in place by itself. So 
So now that we have the carpet patterns done and everything, it's really easy to place it onto the cat tree. We just go ahead and slide it in across around the pillars. And since the platform itself have that half an inch high edge on it, the carpet itself is actually half an inch. So it's gonna create a nice flush look. We're just gonna go ahead and pinch that carpet into the edge of the platform and then it'll be able to hold it down very sturdy and very well. Now to finish off the cat tree, all I did was I took some of that opal non-toxic paint and I just brushed a little bit of it over the rope just to kind of give it a nice lighter cooler finish. Um, so that way it's not so yellow against the rest of the cat tree. And I love the way that it turned out. Uh, make sure when you're doing this, do it very sparsely so that way you don't have a lot of paint stuck together on there. I made a couple mistakes, so I have a couple patches that doesn't look the best, but it's not as noticeable. I wouldn't recommend using a lot of paint. You don't want the entire thing to be filled with paint. This is really just to give it a nice wash so that way the color is not so yellow as the sisal rope comes in. So that concludes today's DIY video. You can see I love the outcome of it. I think that it matches the rest of my home very well. And of course, it's also very functional as well. Uh, you can see that I have that little hanging mouse toy. I actually made that out of a couple Dollar Tree items. So if you guys want to see a video on that, I'll definitely make that for the future. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. It does let me know what type of videos to make for you guys. As always, if you guys have not joined the family already, I make a video every single week. I do apologize to my current subscribers that I was a little bit late this week. This project was ginormous for me. I do work a full-time job as well as handle a photography business and also this YouTube channel. So it's hard for me to make time sometimes. I didn't do anything for Labor Day weekend. I literally just stayed home and worked on this project. So it means a lot to me to try to post these videos for you guys, but I do sincerely apologize for the delay this week. Other than that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your support and all of your love. I love you guys. Have a good day. Bye.